Welcome to the Cinema 4D tutorial. I'm Jesse, and I'm going to continue the low poly stuff that I started doing with this tutorial in low poly trees or how to make low poly trees. So, without further ado, let's get started. And for the first tree, I'm going to make two different variants. For the first tree, I'm going to start with a cube for the trunk. So, first of all, I'm just going to resize the cube in the X and the Z so that it's kind of nice and thin. And then I'm going to change the segments of the Y to about six. It doesn't really have to be exact six, but just so that you can kind of have some kind of bend in the tree trunk, as you'll see in a moment. Now, what we can do is make this editable and actually shrink down these or change them however you want, or we can actually use just a effector. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the bulge effector and just drag the bulge into the cube. And right now nothing happens. And that's because we haven't changed the strength of the bulge. So let's just, if we vamp it up, it'll push this outwards. And we don't want this. No trunk that I know at least looks like that. So I'm going to kind of just bend it inwards just a little bit. And I'm going to increase the Y direction size, 300, so that I can move this up so that the base of the uh, trunk is wider and the top kind of gets skinnier. So this looks pretty good. I'm going to leave that as the trunk and you can rename that if you want to or not. Now we can remove the Fong tag. We don't really need to because this is a cube. It doesn't look rounded or smooth, but whoops, deleted the wrong thing. But just for safekeeping, remove the Fong tag. Now we want to add the leaves or the actual bushy part of the tree. And to do this, I'm going to start with a sphere and just move this up a little bit and shrink it down just, just a touch. Now you can leave the sphere as is with the type, or you can change the type to one of the other things. I usually prefer a casohedron. The reason being is because not only does it triangulate the sphere, but also all the triangles are pretty even in size. For example, if I chose a tetrahedron, I believe, you'll notice these triangles are nice and large, but these are really tiny, which makes it very uneven. So I'm going to use icosahedron. And instead of making this editable right now, I'm going to add the two effectors I showed you in my first low poly tutorial, which is the polygon reduction and the displacer. The reason I use the displacer is just to add a little variety. The displacer with a noise tag in the shading. What it does is basically just kind of amp up the interest. Instead of just making it a perfect sphere, we have now a slightly deformed perfect sphere. And the polygon reduction really gives it that low poly effect. Now for this, I just dragged it in and it's a little bit too much of an effect. So I'm going to push it down, let's see, right around maybe there. That keeps enough of the interesting shape, but also it's got the really strong low poly effect. And now I can delete the Fong tag. You always want to remember to delete the Fong tag sooner or later, or it won't look low poly. For example, if I just put that back, render this, there's nothing low poly about the sphere. Now if I delete it, suddenly it looks more like something that we want to do. You can change other things of the sphere. For example, if I make this editable, press keyboard shortcut C, and maybe change the height, you'll notice that the two transformers or the effectors, the displacement and polygon reduction, are moving constantly as I'm dragging this. You can do this dragging about before you add these and it won't do this live uh, jiggling, I guess. So if you want more of a longer top tree, right now I'll just kind of move this towards the top. And there we go, we still have our basic tree. Looks very pretty. Now for a second type of tree, I'm going to copy this cube over, control drag, and move it off to the side here. And what I'm going to do is I want to make a branch. And so to do this, I need to make this cube first editable, and then select the faces. You'll notice when I choose one of these editor modes, it'll automatically remove the effect of the bulge. The moment I go back into object mode, it adds it back in. Don't worry about this. It's always there. It just makes this so that it's easier to edit. So now I'm going to add a branch right about here. And what I can do is I can use the extrude tool and just kind of pull it out and angle it upwards. Or I can use the matrix extrude. So select your uh, face that you want to extrude and right click and find matrix extrude right here. And now if I pull, it very quickly kind of 
moves out at this angled kind of extrusion. And I'm going to play around with this. I'll just leave it as is. And so right over here, you have the attributes of the extrude tool. So the move, the scale, and the rotate. So I'm going to move it about 10 and rotate it. Let's see, negative 12. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And if you want to scale it, right now the scale looks pretty decent, so I'll leave it as is. And we can go back into object mode to see what it actually looks like. And now I can add a sphere to this and just kind of drag it up here. And I'm going to shrink this down significantly because I'm going to use a second method. Not only do we have a new method now for making the trunk, whoops, but we will have a new method for making the, uh, the bushy part of the tree. I have no better way of naming that right now. So we have this one sphere, but I'm going to add kind of a second uh, sphere to it. So I'm going to control drag this and kind of drag it over here and shrink it down in size just a little bit. And then one more kind of for up here. And again, shrink this down. You don't have to follow it exactly, but you'll understand in a moment what I'm doing. So now we have these three spheres. And notice I haven't deleted the phone tag yet. I'm not really concerned about that yet. But what I want to do is connect these spheres, kind of blob them together. And to do this, Cinema 40 has a nice tool called the Meta Ball. So create the Meta Ball and drag the three spheres into the Meta Ball. And right away, it basically combines them and creates this huge mass. But this is not really the shape of the original spheres. And you can work with the Meta Ball if you select it in the attributes, the hull value editor and render subdivision. So I noticed if you decrease the editor subdivision, I'll put it to one, it basically subdivides it like crazy. This is way too much. So I'm going to set probably to 15 is about good. And then if you decrease the hull value, it, uh, sorry, increase it, it goes closer to the original shapes. Now it shrinks them down, but you'll notice it splits them off into three smaller blobs. So I'm kind of going to try and shape it so we can see the trunk. And that looks pretty good. And now I'll make this editable and remove the phone tag. And then we can just add the same thing. So polygon reduction and displacer, control drag it into the meta ball. And we have some kind of a mess. And I'm going to lower the uh, displacer quite a lot and play around with the polygon reduction. So I think that looks pretty good. It's a smaller tree, significantly smaller. We can make this actually much larger if we want to. And you'll notice I left my meta ball centered at the origin, which probably was a mistake, but right now this looks pretty good. We might have a few pretty large polygons right there. So let's see if I can just lower this just a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now we have two trees and I might have said at the very beginning that I was only going to show you two methods. There is a third, sort of. I'm just going to duplicate this meta ball and work with the second trunk. Let's see, it's this one, yes. And the final method is just working with the trunk, making it look a little more interesting. You'll notice that these two trunks are just very cubic and very boring, in my opinion. So to do this really easily, what we can do is we can add the hypernerbs drag the cube into hypernerbs. And what hypernerbs does is just kind of subdivide it, make it look really smooth and kind of shrink it down a little bit. So I'm going to play around with those settings just a tad. I'm actually going to leave it around there. And let's see, maybe I can increase the size in the Y direction. All right. And now I'll make the hypernerbs editable, but you'll notice right away that if I drag the cube out, because we don't actually need this hypernerbs anymore. And if I render this, it's pretty smooth again. It's not very low poly. So to do this in low poly, again, find your polygon reduction or just get a new one from the effectors tab and drag it into the cube. And I noticed a lot of times moving this really high up works pretty well. Okay, so that's a little too high. So around 93, it looks a little bit more messy sometimes, but every now and then, well, most of the time, it ends up looking quite a bit better than just the cube. And you can play around with this just to see how much stuff you can make. So I'm going to play around a little bit with the displacer and then work with both of these together. So there, that's 
a little bit more of a unique kind of um, tree trunk. I'll move this up just a touch. And there we go. Maybe a little bit too messy, but it works for now. And it looks, I think, at least a lot better than just a square tree trunk. You can also use a cylinder, for example. And if I pull out a cylinder, and you can play around with this using a more vertical subdivisions, more height segments, and then adding a displacer and a polygon reduction. Now I want to texture these just so you can kind of get the feel of the texturing. And I'm going to add a floor object, move it down just so that we have some nice background to see. And later on, I'll add a physical sky because those are kind of cool. So for this kind of low poly texture, what I noticed a lot is low poly looks kind of like paper. A lot of times you'll sometimes see kind of grainy texture on it. I might make a tutorial on how to do that later on, or you can just find a paper material online and use that. That's pretty straightforward. But so I'm going to make a trunk just out of one texture, kind of dark brown and attach it to all the cubes that I can find. And there we go. Let me close these. And one thing you'll notice is that this has a nice little glare. And the problem with this glare, though, is that it kind of makes things look a little bit like plastic. And this glare is due to the specular. So for the low poly style, remove the specular. And this makes the object look very flat, but also it look, makes it look a little bit more like paper, which is kind of the goal that I'm trying to go for. And so I'm kind of feeling like fall right now, even though it's it's almost summer, actually. It's pretty hot where I am. And we can make it one color, or we can make the gradient. So for one of these, I'll just make one color. And for this one, just so we can see the difference, I'll add a gradient. Click on the gradient icon, and we can add some nice gradient to the trees. All right. And I'll just, I'm lazy, so I'll add these to both of them. And if we render this now, you'll notice again, here's the very strong glare. To remove this, remove the specular tag. And if you render it now, it's it looks a lot more flat. You'll also notice, if I change the angle, that this texture is a very straight, hard edge between the light color and the dark color. That is due to, if I go back to the color, click on the gradient, that is due to the type of gradient that you're using. For example, if I change the type, say 3D linear, it'll change the way it affects the object. And so what this is trying to do is uh, move from a dark color over here, let me render this again, to a brighter color over here, and then it relaps over here. So you can change the effect using the start and end. So if I make the end say 200, that might work. And there we go. That gets rid of that little overlap again. And now we can just add a physical sky and let's see, set the physical sky to evening because evening light is pretty. <laughs> and we can see how this scene looks with a few extra effects of ambient occlusion and global illumination, our favorite effects. And then we can just render the scene and see what it looks like. But that's basically how you can create low poly trees. And I've recently found this, and I kind of think it's a pretty neat effect, the whole low poly stuff. And you'll notice right here, my trees are kind of hovering above the plane, so I can actually lift the floor up a bit. Um, and I might do a few more tutorials. I, I found a few other neat things to do. After my previous tutorial, I was playing around with the water, and I figured out how to do kind of a boat effect of uh, having a boat sitting in the water and actually having the water, so to speak, bend around the boat. So I might upload a tutorial like that in the coming week or two. But I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching. See you guys around.